Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher and I'm your accounting instructor. Today we're going over the financial statements and the trial balance. First, we need to prepare a trial balance to be used in preparing financial statements. To do this, we move all the ledger balances into the trial balance in order to make sure that our debits and credits equal so that we're ready to prepare the financial statements. With the help of computer programs, this step is very easy. The next slide shows an example of moving these balances from a couple of ledgers into the trial balance. We'll be using ledger balances from our transactions in previous videos. Okay, let's get started. You can see we have an accounts payable ledger with a $1,000 credit balance. We move this credit balance into the trial balance on the right side of your screen. We would do this for every ledger account balance. In other words, we would take the ending balance in every ledger and move it over into the trial balance. You can also see, as another example, the revenue ledger with an ending credit balance of $7,000. We would move this balance over into the trial balance. Once all the balances are moved into the trial balance, we will total the debits and credits, and they should be equal. Now that we're comfortable that our trial balance is in balance, we can begin to prepare our financial statements. On this slide, you see the trial balance once again, and now we're going to prepare an income statement. It's the first financial statement we prepare, and in a minute you will see why. An income statement calculates the net income or profit for the business for a certain time period. An income statement in general includes revenues minus the expenses. When we prepare a financial statement such as an income statement, we never put debits or credits in the financial statements. Most people don't understand what a debit and a credit is, so that is why the financial statements are prepared without them. Now we move revenue balance over into our income statement, and we also move the expense balance into the income statement. Now we subtract the total expenses from the total revenues to get our net income. This is the profit that the business earned over a certain time period, such as a month or a year. In our income statement, we only have one revenue and only one expense. Most income statements would have more than one type of revenue and would have many expense accounts as well. We would include all the revenue and all the expense accounts in the income statement. Now, let's look at the next financial statement that we will prepare. You can see that we still need our trial balance. This next financial statement is the statement of owner's equity, and we start with the beginning owner's capital. In our example, this is a brand new business, so the beginning owner's capital balance is zero. From here, we will add any new owner contributions. If you recall, the owner contributed $50,000. Next, we add in our net income or net loss. The net income comes from our income statement. That is why we prepare the income statement first, because we need the net income amount in order to prepare this financial statement. The next step in preparing the statement of owner's equity is to subtract out any withdrawals. You can see the withdrawals in the trial balance, and we need to include this balance in the statement of owner's equity. Once we subtract our withdrawals, our statement of owner's equity balance is $53,000. We will need this ending balance in order to prepare our next financial statement, which is the balance sheet. Once again, we begin with the trial balance as we need the balances in assets and liabilities in order to complete this financial statement. One more comment before we begin. The balance sheet is basically the accounting equation, assets, equal liabilities plus equity. You can see the balance sheet on the right side of the screen. We will now bring in the trial balance accounts that are needed in order to prepare the balance sheet. First, we will do the assets. You can see cash is 47,000 in the trial balance and we'll move that over into our balance sheet as well as supplies, accounts receivable and equipment. Our total assets are $64,000. Now we will prepare the liabilities portion of the balance sheet. 
you will recall that liabilities are what the business owes. In this case, there are two liabilities, accounts payable and notes payable. Accounts payable is $1,000, while notes payable is $10,000. We include these amounts in our liability section of our balance sheet. Finally, we will prepare our equity section. We previously prepared the statement of owner's equity, which showed the ending capital balance for our owner. This balance was $53,000, and we will include that balance in our equity section of our balance sheet. Note that this balance includes our revenue, less our expenses, less our withdrawals, so we do not need these accounts in our equity section, since they are accumulated in the capital balance. You might need to step back and really think about that. In our next lecture, we will be going over the differences between accrual basis and cash basis accounting. Cash basis is not allowed per gap. GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, which are the rules that accountants follow. Well, class, I hope this video has helped you, and I hope you enjoy the next video.